Hi there, I'm Kelly. Welcome to my channel. Are you thinking about taking a solo cruise? Solo cruising is wonderful and I recommend it for everyone. Solo cruising is definitely a thing and you ought to try it. Do you wonder what to expect as a solo cruiser? There's a lot to talk about, but today I'm going to give you my top 10 things I think you should know as you prepare for your first solo cruise. Number one, you will pay a supplement fee. So you're shopping around for your first solo cruise. You're on the websites looking at the prices. Maybe you think you're going to pay for the price of one person. Wrong. There's a thing called a supplement fee or sometimes a solo supplement fee. That means that even though you're one person occupying one cabin, you're going to pay the same price as if two people were taking that sailing and occupying that cabin. There may be a lot of reasons for this. We don't really know, but overall it makes sense for the cruise lines to have a minimum charge for each cabin on the ship. Otherwise, everybody would probably go ahead and pay half price and have their own cabin and their own bathroom, even if they were traveling as large groups. They want to make the most money possible. So even though you're one person, you're gonna pay the minimum, which is double occupancy prices. Now, having said that, there are times when cruise lines have sales throughout the year where they reduce that solo supplemental fee. So you want to keep your eye out for some bargains. There are many, many ways to go about checking for sales on solo supplement fees. One of the best ways is to go over to Cruise Critic and check out their solo cruising board. There's a whole section in there where people share tips and sales that they come across. Also, I highly recommend that you sign up for the newsletter for each cruise line you're interested in. Sometimes sales will pop up and you'll be the first to know in that newsletter. Number two, some cruise lines will offer you double loyalty points. So you're paying this double supplement fee or a solo supplement fee. Where is the benefit for you? Well, with some cruise lines, you will be offered double loyalty points because you're sailing alone. So for example, with Royal Caribbean, I'm part of their Crown and Anchor Society. And when I cruise, say, seven nights by myself, even though I do pay that solo supplement fee, I am given 14 points towards my record instead of just seven. Those points add up to member benefits. So it may not matter to you, but it is something to think about. They do offer you double points sometimes, and those things can lead to reduced cost of internet or reduced cost on merchandise on the ship or discounts on beverage packages or internet or things like that. So that is one perk about solo cruising that helps make up for the supplemental fee, double loyalty points. When you book your cruise, check into that and see if that's going to apply to you. Number three, you will only be charged once for port fees and mandatory gratuities. Okay, the good news is that even though you're going to be charged double for your cruise, as if you were two people, you will only be charged one time for port fees and for mandatory gratuities for the crew. So when you book a cruise, you will be offered the opportunity to prepay cruise gratuities. Those are between $12 and $18 a day depending on what kind of cabin you have. You don't have to pay double for those. You will only be charged for one person. And the same goes for port fees. Every time you stop in a port, there's some kind of fee attached and that's added onto your cruise fare. You don't have to pay double for those things. I do want to add though, that if you're one person in a cabin by yourself, that it is nice to give your crew a little extra to make up for the fact that they're not getting quite as many tips as they might if you were a couple. That is completely voluntary. That is a whole other conversation. Just a suggestion. Number four, solo cabins exist. That's right, they do. Almost all cruise lines have some amount of solo cabins available on most of their ships. And some cruise lines, like Norwegian, have a lot of solo cabins available. Either way, when you plan your cruise, 
do some digging into your cruise line and into your specific ship to see if solo cabins are available. Now these will be smaller rooms, much smaller. You might even have a twin size bed in some cases, but you've got your own room, a closet, a private bathroom, and in some cases, like on Celebrity, there are solo cabins offered with an infinite veranda. The benefit of a solo cabin is that you're not paying that double supplement fee. So if you don't mind a smaller room, definitely look into those to save money. Number five, you don't have to dine alone. One of the things most people seem to worry about when they're planning a solo cruise is, am I going to have to eat all my meals alone? Am I going to feel awkward? Am I going to look stupid? Here's the answer. No, you don't have to dine alone if you don't want to. Most cruise lines will seat solo travelers with other people in the main dining room. And often you will find yourself at a table filled with other solo travelers. So you're not necessarily looking at being the third wheel at a table with a large family. You are probably looking at sitting at a table with other individuals who are cruising solo. And that can be a lot of fun. Dining can be an unexpected way to meet some really interesting people who are out traveling alone like you are. And that can turn into friendships. You can make friends that you sit at shows with or play trivia with. You can look forward to catching up with each other at the end of the day and find out what everybody did with their port day, for example. Things like that. You also have the option of eating alone if you really want to, but I just want you to know it's not a given that you're going to be sitting at a table in a corner by yourself. Number six, there will be other solos on your cruise. On that note, as I just said, there will be other solo travelers on your cruise. I can almost guarantee it. Because solo traveling has become such a big thing, most cruise lines host solo cruiser get-togethers. That can be a great way to meet people ahead of time. There's also usually a Facebook group for your cruise. Make sure you find that and join it. And you can just lurk if you want to and listen to the chatter and get to know people, or you can just jump in and introduce yourself. Usually get-togethers are organized, maybe a slot poll, maybe a gift exchange, things like that. It's a great way to meet people. You will find other people traveling alone are open to having conversations and telling you about themselves. And if you want to be social, that opportunity is there. Obviously, if you just want to be by yourself and disconnect and be left alone, you can do that too. That's the great thing about cruising. There's something for everyone and there's plenty of room to be as social or not social as you want. Number seven, you will be called brave. Okay, this one mostly applies to women. I just want you to know as a woman when you're traveling solo, there will be a mix of attitudes. You may find people just completely stunned that you're cruising by yourself. You may find people that are totally excited for you, surprised, and maybe even inspired to do that themselves. But a lot of times you will find yourself explaining to people that you're traveling alone. It just comes up in everyday conversation on the cruise, even if you're an introvert, even if you keep to yourself. At some point during your cruise, you're probably going to find yourself explaining to somebody, yes, I am traveling solo. Now, some people are going to call you brave. This is meant as a compliment I've come to see. It's, it's not meant as anything weird, but uh, when people started calling me brave the first few times I went solo cruising, I was just baffled. I thought I am taking a luxury vacation, completely optional. I'm going to go be spoiled. I'm going to go to the spa. I'm going to swim and see the ocean. How is that brave? But I think a lot of people just are surprised at the idea that a person would take it upon themselves to go out into the world and see things and do things by themselves. So just be prepared for that to happen and take it as the compliment it's meant to be. Number eight, people will ask you questions. On that note, be prepared. People are going to ask you questions. Even if you're an introvert, even if you spend all day lying by the pool reading a book, you will find yourself at some point 
being asked questions about what's it like to be a solo cruiser. When did you start? What do you like about it? How often do you go? Things like that. People are intrigued. Some people have never even thought about cruising solo, and they want to hear all about it. Now, I have found there's not a really great one-size-fits-all answer to the question, solo cruising, what's that like? I mean, I usually tell people it's great, I love it, and that's all I have. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it, but be prepared. Also, be prepared for questions that might be a bit nosy. Sometimes when you plan your very first solo cruise, your friends might ask you questions like, is everything okay? If you're married, you might find questions like, are you guys okay? Is everything good between you two? Why isn't your husband going with you? Things like that. People are curious and sometimes they ask questions without really thinking about it. So naturally you don't have to answer these questions, but they're going to come. So just be prepared. Number nine. You will make friends. The first few times I went solo cruising, I wasn't looking to make friends. I didn't join my Facebook group ahead of time. I didn't plan on socializing. I wanted to go cruising and disconnect, chill out, be left alone, lie by the pool and look out at the sea and read a book. However, I kept finding myself making friends. As I mentioned before, I was seated at a table with other solo travelers, and they're all so interesting and fun to be with. We ended up playing bingo together, going to trivia games together, sitting together at shows. We would trade numbers, and we would text each other throughout the day. Hey, you want to get together? Sometimes we did, and sometimes we didn't. But at the end of the day, I found myself getting to know a lot of really nice people. And some of those people I still stay in touch with. So even if you're an introvert and you don't join the Facebook group and you don't plan on anything, be prepared because the opportunity is there to meet other people, to make some friends on the ship, and to have some people to hang out with if you want to. Number 10. You will get spoiled. Okay, last but not least, you will be spoiled. I'm telling you, cruising solo is awesome. It is also equally awesome to cruise with family and friends and share those wonderful memories and times together. But if you find yourself going solo, it is also awesome and you will be spoiled in a whole new way. It is incredible to wake up every day on a luxurious, beautiful ship with gorgeous scenery in front of you and be free to do whatever you want to do all day long. You work at your energy level, you focus on your interests, you can change your mind about things at the last minute, maybe not get off the ship or do get off the ship. You don't have to consult with anyone. You eat when you're ready, you eat what you want, you don't have to have conversations with other people about where you're going or what you're going to eat tonight. You don't have to try to please anybody else or worry that somebody is maybe not having a good time. All those things add up. You can go to the spa, you can go to the casino, you can go back to your room and it's going to be empty and it's going to be quiet and you can take a nice long nap or you can watch the movie that you pick. Whatever you want, solo cruising is the ultimate self-indulgence and it is wonderful. That wraps up my top 10 reasons why I think you should try solo cruising. Again, there's so much more to talk about with solo cruising, but today I just boiled it down to the top 10 things to be aware of when you plan your very first solo cruise. I hope you'll give it a try. And if you like this video, please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos, ship tours, cabin tours, reviews, port tours, things like that. Thanks for stopping by and enjoy your cruise. Happy sailing.